So there are basically two type of compensations. One are internal bodies compensation and the other one is external that is you as a doctor helping the patient to compensate. So what are those compensations inside? Sometimes these are successful and sometimes not. Most of the time internal compensation actually end up exacerbating the problem, aggravating the problem and cause more damage. So you will have to step in and try to help. Reduce contractility, ischemic heart disease, infarction, something happened to the heart, it cannot pump properly, cardiac output has gone down. What will happen? Frank Starling mechanism will be, will be engaged. What, that mean, what does that mean? That means that as the heart starts failing, venous return is still sufficient, but the output is not sufficient, heart starts stretching. That stretching of the heart would cause increased contractility and so that is the Frank Starling mechanism. In the early part, that would actually help. However, a, as the damaged heart continues to exert force but cannot create extra good cardiac output, it would start becoming hypertrophied. So if you do not step in or if those mechanisms do not find a balance, then the decompensated cardiac failure would occur. What is decompensated cardiac failure? A cardiac failure where the cardiac output even after all these compensatory mechanisms does not reach normal or near normal, meaning it is still kind of bringing the patient down towards death that is decompensated. Compensated is where the cardiac output went down and then the compensation mechanism started and they brought the output back sufficiently back up that patient did not feel much or patient at rest is feeling okay. So that is compensated. So Frank Starling would help in the early days as compensate, compensation mechanism and that would be compensated cardiac uh, failure and later it would become decompensated cardiac failure. How about neurohormonal systems? So yes, of course, sympathetic system would become engaged right away and norepinephrine will be released and epinephrine will be released and the vasoconstriction would occur and increased contractility of the heart would occur and increased force of contraction would happen and increase. We have talked about it all in detail. I do not want to do that here. The result is that that mechanism would also help increase the pressure and volume. Renal system is a more long term solution. So now what will happen is that as the perfusion to the kidney has reduced, renin angiotensin system would start becoming active. That would try to retain more and more fluids, which in the beginning will be good thing, but later it would become bad. Why is, is it good in the beginning? There is more venous return, so more cardiac output, so good. Secondly, as the blood pools in the veins, the veins distend and distended vein is actually easy to have the blood flow. So blood flow would start becoming better, venous return is better, so kind of good thing. But as we keep getting more and more fluids, we are retaining more and more fluid, slowly that would just exert more and more pressure on the heart and that would once again start this spiral of failure. Atrial natriuretic peptide and, and brain natriuretic peptide. So these are the hormones that are released when atria or ventricular stretch. ANP comes from the atrial stretch and BNP which is brain natriuretic peptide comes from the ventricular stretch. Why is it brain natriuretic peptide? Because it was found in procrine animals or the, the creatures in their brains. However, in humans it is found from the uh, ventricles uh, as the, their stretch. What do these do ANP and BNP? They work on the vascular system and the, and the renal system and they try to preserve, retain water as well. So once again they are trying to help with the, if it is stretch then they would try to ex excrete water to reduce the load. But if it is less stretch then their re reduction will mean increased load. And finally um, how about remodeling? So remodeling is any change in shape, size, structure of the heart to compensate for increased cardiac load. Remodeling can be physiological where the patient uh, uh, not the patient, the person has started doing exercises and the heart needs to become stronger and hypertrophied and, and, uh, and, and work better. So that is physiological remodeling. Pathological remodeling would hap happen in, in failure like situations where the heart is damaged. So as it keeps exerting unnecessarily, the heart would start becoming hypertrophied which would increase the demand of oxygen in the heart and heart is already failing, it does not have enough output that would cause a vicious loop and start causing a problem. You know that the hypertrophy is eccentric and concentric type. Concentric because of high pressure and eccentric because of high volume. So these are the compensatory mechanisms and that is the right heart failure. Thank you.